Fulfillment to me means practicing my values, which are happiness, freedom, and win-win. And having a purpose which is bigger than myself. In my younger years, the people would call that I had an ideal life. You know, my parents were supportive. They loved me and provided me all the freedom I needed. They supported my dreams. They provided me endless opportunities. Now, despite those options and that supporting environment, I often still felt lost. That freedom, I wasn't feeling happy. I was feeling like empty and unsure with myself. And I used to then compare myself with others. And I got into myself with scarcity mindset as well. But then after reading, observing, listening to thought leaders around the globe, I found this simple word called serving. And that was the aha moment for me. Welcome to Playing With Perspective, the suspended animation podcast, where we hear real stories from real people and we tackle all sorts of fun topics in the areas of business, marketing, entrepreneurship, mindset, the arts, and well, life itself. It's amazing what you'll pick up. Thanks for joining us. Welcome, everyone. Another fantastic episode of Playing With Perspective, the Suspended Animation Podcast. I have the fantastic Mukesh Bajaj here for episode 232. And we're going to be chatting all about how to live a fulfilled life in seven steps. How are you doing, Mukesh? Good, thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on the show. Really looking forward to it. But I'm going to give everybody a little bit of an insight into who Mukesh is before we jump in. Our special guest today is Mukesh Bajaj, a visionary, purpose-driven founder of NextZen Accounting and lead fulfillment coach with over 20 years of experience in the industry. In 2011, Mukesh started his own accounting business to solve three problems in the industry. One, the high failure rate of standalone small and medium businesses. Number two, the lack of wealth or cash flow for business owners at the retirement age. And number three, the focus of accountants on compliance and reporting instead of proactively guiding business owners to create a sustainable and profitable business. Mukesh has solved these problems for his clients, and now he is taking his quest a step further. He has made it his life's purpose to help 15,100 people achieve financial freedom and a fulfilled life. Mukesh has written a book which outlines these seven steps, which is launching on the 6th of November this year. It's a framework that can be followed by anyone for any situation. It is a universal process designed to help you define what you want to achieve and overcome problems that are holding you back. Whether you're looking to discover what makes up a fulfilled life or want to learn more about this step-by-step process to live your life by design, not by default, you're in for a treat. So without further ado, let's dive in and please welcome my guest, Mukesh Bajaj. Thank you, Darren. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. (laughs) My pleasure. I'd love to dive into the conversation because it's a really interesting one. We all need to know how to live a fulfilled life. So why don't we jump in and tell us a bit more about your background and how this book came about. Take you to the start. I was born in a small town in India. My dad was a franchisee of a very successful logistics company. So the money was good and everything was, was smooth. Until, you know, the one day that franchise old brothers had a fight and they decided to shut down the business. So my family, my father had no business, no income. Mm. And then he tried to find out a similar size business, but he couldn't find any. So one of my uncle, then he suggested that they should start their own logistics company. And that's what they did. However, they didn't realize that this new business needed different mindset different skill set and the capital which my dad didn't have. This business had more overheads than the previous one. And he used to be some time, you know, behind in paying wages some months. And then he had to, you know, borrow money from friends and relatives to keep the business going. So he was stuck. He couldn't see any part. And that pushed my mom into the mindset of scarcity and anxiety, which was a reflection of how she was brought up with her seven sisters in, in one home. So that's how the situation was. And I tried to help, but I couldn't do much 
because I was also working as like a law CM. Then one day, one of my friends encouraged me to come to Australia. And needless to say, my family had financial challenges, no savings, but they decided to mortgage their family home. And here I was. And then I worked in restaurants to pay the bills while I was studying. After completing my master's in accounting and uh, CPA, I started my own company, own accounting company. And this is where I saw the similar patterns of stress and uncertainty with the clients, which I witnessed firsthand with my mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And therefore, my clients uh, connected with me because I felt their pain. So then fast forward a few years, we were growing, we hired more people, but then we didn't have the right systems in place. We were started dropping the balls. We were completing jobs at the last minute. With bigger office, more people, our overheads, you know, increased significantly. Mm -hmm. Then I stopped for a moment. I reflected on my journey, but I found that my mom didn't value herself because she was uh, lived in that environment of that scarcity and anxiety. And then my dad lived a stressful life because he couldn't make enough money from the business. And I was getting into the similar situation, like my mom and dad, which bothered me. And I didn't want that situation at all for myself or my wife my son, and for my mom and dad. That's where then I decided to take a massive action, to fix this issue forever. And this was a time then I handpicked two of my team members. We locked ourselves in a conference room and we spent Monday to Saturday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., three months in a row. We were in that room. Wow. You know, right down on the boards, all the scribbles. And those, that time, that process was most intense process. I've ever been in my life. Then those whiteboard scribbles transformed into our value system. Since then, I then read hundreds of books, hundreds of, uh, listened to hundreds of podcasts and learned from like the thought leaders around the globe. But like always, you know, I had to find a simple solution that would align with me. Beautiful. And this is where this value system then transformed into that seven steps fulfillment system. We changed me from a headless chicken to a fulfilled human being. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> this is how, <laughs> this is my story, yeah. Amazing, amazing. Well, I mean, first of all, congratulations to you for recognizing where you're at and doing something about it. A lot of people don't do that. Well, I'm very, very grateful for that time, even though it was, it was tough time from that perspective, then I'm grateful for my, my, my business partner and I'm grateful for the clients that, that I could, I could take that time off and spend this time to do that exercise here. Yeah. And it brings us to the broader question. Let's define what fulfillment is and what does it mean to you? Because I suppose it can mean many things. Fulfillment to me means practicing my values, which are happiness, freedom, and win-win. And having a purpose which is bigger than myself. In my younger years, the people would call that I had an idea of life. You know, my parents were supportive. They loved me and provided me all the freedom I needed. They supported my dreams. They provided me endless opportunities. Now, despite those options and that supporting environment, I often still felt lost. That freedom, I wasn't feeling happy. I was feeling like empty and unsure with myself. And I used to then compare myself with others. And I got into myself with scarcity mindset as well. But then after reading, observing, listening to thought leaders around the globe, I found this simple word called serving. And that was the aha moment for me. And that took me out from my miserable, empty life. And then I kept thinking and asking myself what the serving meant for me, time and time again. Then one, at one challenging time, I got this breakthrough. I realized that I had to find my core values yep. and the purpose, which truly matters to me. Once I discovered those, everything began to change. Love that. Love that. So true. We all get more satisfaction when we give than when we receive. Yeah. Then I started feeling, uh, my feeling of being lost and stuck went away. My path became clearer. I started making decisions with, which were true to myself. And in this realization, I found that my fulfillment was in fulfilling other people's lives, in serving others seeing them getting unstuck, guiding them achieving what they want in their life. Love it. And I want to just dive in a little more to your core values. Can you expand on those a bit more, Morris? 
Yeah, my core values, I divide them into two categories, like in the mean values and end values. So my end values are happiness, freedom, and win-win, which means my happiness, your happiness. I value both. My freedom, your freedom. Win-win solution. So it's mainly these values are not just mine. I, I value those values for others as well. So these are my end values. And I practiced my mean values, which are the four other ones, which is resourcefulness, integrity, innovation, and excellence. So these four values are then my means to achieve the end, which is happiness, freedom, and winning. Beautiful. Yeah. So let's dive in. Tell us more about the book and about these seven steps. This question, like, you know, sharing the whole book in one question. So, so bear with me. I will do my best to keep it short. And for the audience, I'll break the steps into three sub-steps, which is why that step is important. Right. What is this step about? Beautiful. And then how can we do that step? I'll take that way. Great. So the first step is celebrate and be grateful. So when you look at uh, now the perspective, and perspective and now being grateful, they are connected because this is how, you know, you see the life. Why is it important? See, being grateful brings numerous benefits. It's a mental, emotional, or even enhances our physical well-being. It reduces our stress and anxiety. It enhances our resilience. It strengthens our relationships. Improves sleep quality. Boosts immunity. And also, it helps us practice mindfulness. Explaining gratefulness, we emphasize seven things that we are grateful for in any situation. This is what we practice in our, through the system. That when I asked this question to my eight-year-old son, then his answers were like very simple, like school, mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. food, <laughs> house, parents. Good. Yeah. And then he goes cheeky with that gifts <laughs> and then friends. So, so that was his, his, you know, seven, seven things that he's grateful for at, at the time. Then I asked that question. So now how can we practice uh, gratitude is you can um, schedule a specific time, either every day or once in a week, can take a few moments to think about what things in life you're grateful for. You can send uh, thank you notes to the people in your life, or you can do a, any kind of act of kindness, for example. You know, you can do help someone, for example. So that's also how you can practice gratitude. Now, step two is uh, align your fulfillment vision. Why is it important? Because it ensures that your action and goals are in harmony with your core values and true purpose. In this step, what we do is uh, we define all 10 elements of your fulfillment vision which are activities, behavior, habits, beliefs, goals, values, character, purpose, principles, and environment. So these are the 10 elements. You, you define them and you discover their meaning into your life. So how do we align? Uh, we follow the process like you choose a purpose. So purpose is the central here. And then you write down minimum three points for each other elements that, for example, what kind of environment that is, what kind of values you need to hold. So just minimum three points so that you can see. and then. What kind of habits do you need to, to create or break? So all this, when you complete this exercise for all nine elements, then you see, and then you align them. Are they, you know, are they supporting your main purpose? Is that something, is there a conflict? Is that something that your habits are there? For example, if you want to learn a new skill, so maybe you want to add on habits of reading or, or watching or listening to for that particular skill or practicing that, for example. So it just keeps you aligned that all your efforts go in one direction. That's number two. Now, number three step is know your way. It's important because understanding what true fulfillment means for you, it ensures that you are you're setting up choosing meaningful goals. You're choosing something that means to you, not that someone else's life, for example. You want to live your life, what you want. We do this by our 30 cells framework where we identify and articulate our holistic goals across all domains of our life, which is if you look at how we make this 30, so you've got six needs, which is your brand, money, time, skill, health, and experience. So these are the six needs across your five domains of your life. 
which is your yourself is the first domain because you when you create your life you just you know set yourself out and you you create it on for yourself and then your family your business or team or you know colleagues so that uh, your employment number four is your uh, friends and community number five is then uh, spiritual non spiritual circle your you know, your interest on in that so and you don't have to have all the five circles you can choose you can't not have you so that would always be one circle but then you can choose who would be in your family how many people would you have kids or not all those things you can choose yeah. and then six kind of the needs and also they are not in any order you can you can make your own order it just a, a guide what i share that this is how i prioritize in my life for example so i just share that but again depending on what situation what life says you are you may put health up and a skill later or maybe sometime in the starting years you want to have the skill up and another factors later so depending on what and where you are and how yeah, you want priorities to. change during your life we all that happens to one of us yeah. so this way then we we reflect on each cell we write goals making sure they align with your step two that that purpose you discovered yeah, this way you can you can revisit, define your goals. That ensures your what do you want from your life, right? But does a true, a holistic fulfillment of goals look like? So that's, that gives you that. Step four is about now. We also acknowledge that to achieve our fulfillment, we must have someone in our life. So it's like you know when you look at I mentioned earlier serving. If I don't have anyone in my life, then I'm not. I'm not serving someone, for example, so then it means that I may not have fulfilled life. And this is me. Again, depending on your likes and what you want from your life, like all those life circles are basically your client. So I see them as a client. And I've taken this terminology, a client terminology. So this is why it just makes it easier to understand that, yep. So now, whether it's a you know, spouse, whether you're your kid, whether you're a parent, whether you're em employee, whether you're a colleague, whether you're boss, you can consider them all your client from this paradigm perspective. Yeah, makes sense. Right. And understanding their needs and expectation is a very critical step to create the win-win solution, which we do accept. And how do we do this step is basically we practice the values, curiosity and empathy. Very important. Thanks to the legend Stephen Covey, who where I learned these two habits, curiosity and empathy. Whenever I am with anyone in a conversation, I, I remind myself that that I don't want to be just, you know, judging the conversation or, or the person. I just want to be curious and have that empathy in me. So that helps me to to listen to them just by reminding these two, two habits. Yeah. In this step, we go deep in understanding what pain are they having if they've had any problems? You know, what is the negative impact of that problem in their life? What are the opportunities? You know, what is the positive impact if they could create and have those opportunities in their life or achieve that what they want? So this way, we really go deep in learning and understanding, which then become a fundamental, a foundation that the information we have about ourselves, about the person we we're working with or we're living with. Because the winning solutions to create that, and why again? Because if you want a sustainable fulfillment, what I've found is this is the only way you can achieve when both parties win. Absolutely. And when I say both, it means that everyone in that connection. It's not two, it's it's everyone, for example. So just like everybody wins. And you create the solutions which which align then, you know, supply and client. And in this step we do is we create up to three solutions. As a supplier, you propose those solutions and take agreement from the client. So this is the supplier's responsibility. When you look at the system, supplier is the driver. So they're looking at providing the solution because they have those understanding of the system. They have all six elements. So they provide the implementation roadmap. They also share what the joint accountabilities will be, that who will do what and when. Step five means now you have a complete and a clear understanding that what does the solution look like? What do we looking forward to how we solve this client's problem? Clear reason. You know the purpose, you know the the benefits, the negative and positive. You nail all now, right? Perfect. And uh, everyone's agreed on that. Yep, that's a good timeline. Everyone has a KPI on those six elements, KPI. From here, life is very simple. Now you're focusing on delivering that what you agreed on with excellence. Because when we deliver those results with high quality, with the value of integrity, it brings the trust and reliability. You know, you will see that the other person will, will start trusting you. 
they will see you reliable because you consistently delivering that result. You mean it, what you promised. You know, you show up on time, you deliver. And this is why notice these four elements in this, that four delivering with excellence means that you providing the solution, which was agreed within time, within budget, within the specifications we agreed on, and also you're providing a fulfilling experience. So when you deliver these four things, it means you, you have done excellent job. It's very objective. You know, if, if I'm sharing you something and you feel like, yeah, it's within the time we agreed on and the cost is what we agreed on and the quality is the specs we had to have. And then you, we also enjoyed the journey. Right. I love it. And, and then we do it through, you know, we got, again, uh, processes to achieve that. That we got follow the the recipe checklist and gradient process. We got scorecards, we got quality review, accountability meetings, and everything. So this all, when we follow the process, you are able to deliver your job with excellence every time. Number seven is now achieve with joy. This is where now we celebrate. We've been celebrating our journey from one to one to seven, but this is the time when we celebrate. Our, as a supplier, your success, because now you've delivered your client's success in step six, you've delivered your job. This is a time when your client delivers you. Even sometimes I've seen that even you've received the, the money in advance, but this is a step seven where you, you know, you feel it's yours now because you've done the job. You can sit back and enjoy the result. Yes. Yes. Also in this, this step, we look for the feedback. We collect the feedback from the client. We share our feedback, how, how our journey was for them. So we got that opportunity for, uh, for both of us. And then we reflect on our learnings. We celebrate the achievement. So that's power pack, that process where, where we're just you know, celebrating, learning, reflecting, yeah, feedback to each other so that we can continue our journey with the same client or the client. But so that's how, when you look at uh, step one to seven, it's a universal system you can use in any situation in your life. And how I've shared is that it's, it's, a, it's a GPS to your, your financial freedom and a fulfilled life. Like it. Love it. And I love that they're so balanced in terms of some of them are very tactical and some of them are a little bit more philosophical yeah. and spiritual, which is what I love. And I think the balance of the two together allows people to achieve what they want to achieve in a balanced fashion. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, now they tried to make it uh, kind of uh, implementable as well as connecting. Mm. And I love that as well. Step one is all about being grateful. First step, let's be grateful for what we do have. That's it. It's yeah. about chasing something else. Yeah, we start chasing in, in step three. Once we know that, is it something we really want? Exactly. Before that, we don't, you know, otherwise everything becomes, and that was uh, my problem as well. And, and I've, or like so many founders have this problem, every new thing becomes the, the focus, you know. That's right. Shiny and, object, shiny object sy uh, syndrome, yeah, as they yeah. say. <laughs> <laughs> love it. it beautiful. I love those seven steps. How did the writing process come about? How, what was it like for you? That would have been quite a journey in itself. See, writing is hard for everyone and even for the seasoned writers. And, and I've listened to hundreds of authors admitting Mm -hmm. It's a difficult and long journey. Yeah, yeah. And I knew about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't complain. I knew about it. But at the same time, they acknowledge that writing a book is the best thing that happened in their life. It brings so much clarity and knowledge. They're able to reflect about their life and learnings. It's challenging, but at the same time, it's incredibly rewarding. And writing process for me, was like a journey of like writing scribbles on that whiteboard, then brainstorming with the team, with my, you know, my wife, and then evolving those frameworks, which I, I love, I'm passionate about, as you can see. Yeah. And then integrating the, that what I've learned from them, listening, reading books, podcasts, and, and understanding how on that same situation that how, you know, what their advice was or... So yeah, integrating all those, validating what I'm, what I think, and learning again back from them, taking those examples. It took me seven years. This whole process took me seven years. The very first five years were creating and using system, because that time I there was no uh, book, so it was just we were doing for ourselves, just doing it. Then again, using it for myself, my family, 
and uh, my team with my clients. But then last two years, uh, I've been actively bringing this book to the life. You know, when you look at how it was started and what it is now, it's much better. It's much better. I would say it's complete. Yeah. All the sequence, it's implementable. You know, you can apply in any situation. It works. Lots of stories yep. uh, we have. And uh, it's both now educational as well as entertaining. Great. I like that. Yeah. So this, this whole journey has been an amazing experience for me. Yeah. Wow. So the first five years, you just use these steps yourself. You use the framework yourself. And to, after that, you decided to write the book. So why yeah. was that? Why did you feel the need to start actually writing the book? And what do you want to achieve with this? I wanted to use this this book as a foundation of a comprehensive support system. And with the book, you can see that in a complete, again, form. This is the only book where you can see the complete form. Otherwise, you can you can listen to part of that. You can you can read one article, but it don't see that you know from start to end. So the book gives you the enough detail, yeah. uh, implementation. And my intention is, as I mentioned, my purpose is to help fifteen thousand one hundred people. Right. I want to help that through the book and the other ongoing resources I'm creating as we speak, like, see YouTube, social media, or the courses I'm creating. Yeah, basically, my intention is to help, you know, people get unstuck so that they can live a fulfilled life. And if I'm instrumental in serving people, and that's what, you know, fulfills me. And so where did you get that number, 15,100? <laughs> yeah, when I was writing this number, I knew that this, this question will come, you know. <laughs> uh, and I've, I've shared that in the book as well. I chose this number very thoughtfully. I Went with this, like if I coach 100 people in my life and those coaches then can help 100 other people in their life, so then we will be able to actively impact 10,000 lives. And then also we wanted to involve the people in your life circle of these, these 10,000 people. Because without them alone, we can't achieve uh, the fulfillment. And say to have a fulfillment, we, we must have someone, you know, and someone we, we, we could serve. So that's why... Very important having this these people in the life circle, and I also wanted to emphasize on that our obligation to our parents, which is often forgotten with our other responsibilities. I wanted to include them and remind ourselves that about their crucial role and importance in life, because without them we couldn't be who we are. Our upbringing, whether it's say again, uh, some have good, some have challenging. One I I acknowledge that. And this is why I want to learn that step one I mentioned earlier. Be grateful about, we can find something that even in that hard time, but I've been you know, uh, grateful that I had my very supportive and loving parents. So this is how this total brings to 15,100. Gotcha. It's about you helping or teaching this to certain people and they in turn teach it and help other people. Yeah. I love it. Yep. Awesome. Um, and I love that, again, this is a framework that can be used in any facet to achieve any goal in life, not only financial, it can be non-financial, it can be learning a skill, it can be being better at a hobby, it could be anything. Yeah, that's any true. objective that you're trying to fill, you can use this framework to achieve it. Love yeah, that. very true. Yeah. Uh, but let's take financial freedom in particular. What does financial freedom mean to you? I've seen definition of financial freedom at multiple places, but I had to go deep on that for myself. And I see that financial freedom is multifaceted concept. It is, for me, it's beyond monetary wealth. It is one of the six elements, as I said, money is one of the six elements, which has a very crucial role in enabling and enhancing other five, which are that brand, time, skill, health, and experience, those five. Yeah. So the money is one of six, right? Financial freedom is a is a vital resource which opens doors and create opportunities. Definitely. With financial freedom, we can set bigger milestones and achieve them even faster. With the resources, we can even set up ambitious goals without any financial limitations. We can choose the people in our life circle who we want to be with, whose values and purpose are aligned. It's not about, again, just my fulfillment. It's about helping others create a fulfilled life so that I could share my resource, the knowledge and the support to uplift others. So financial freedom helps that gives the money to support 
my essential need and those needs of my people in my life circle. With money's been one, so then five other needs, which is a brand. So brand here means that I could live the life of values and purpose so that I could be remembered for what I stand for. So like reputation and legacy all wrapped up into one. Yes. And having, you know, a freedom to decide how I want to spend my 168 hours of the week. So that's the time. The skill means that so that I have a freedom to choose which skill I want to practice and learn. Yeah. Yeah. And from which coach, yeah. which university, which school. Yeah. Financial freedom helps that. Financial freedom helps in having that physical and mental well-being for myself and my loved ones. It helps me creating and enjoying those experiences which bring joy and satisfaction. So yeah, so this is my definition for a financial freedom. If you break it down to one word, it's about choice. That's it. It's That's choice. It. it gives you choice. Yep. In many parts, of, in all parts of your life. I love yeah, that. I'd say. Okay, love it. Love and it. so Mukesh, tell us a bit more about Next Zen and how you work in general. As you shared in my previously in the story that I started my accounting company in 2011 to solve those three major problems that I found, uh, you know, that existed in that industry for my clients, you know. There were high failure rates for standalone small and medium businesses. Number two was lack of wealth and cash flow for business owners from their retirement. Number three is the focus of accountants on compliance and reporting rather than helping small business owners to, you know, create a profitable and sustainable business. So let me share you the uh, some stats here that the 20% of small businesses in Australia fail first, within the first year, 40% in first three, and 50% in first five years. Only 20% are able to sell their business to fund retirement. 72% wish their accountants wish their accountants provide more proactive business advice rather than focusing on compliance. Yeah. So we have now uh, sold these three problems for our clients. And now, you know, going one step further, which is I'm focused on the study done by World Economic Forum that life satisfaction increases with age. But only 20% of people aged between 45 to 64 report high life satisfaction. So it indicates that a significant proportion still struggles with fulfillment. And now I've taken a mission to help 15,100 people. And we have designed our business, the whole business, to guide small business owners and their team members to achieve financial freedom and a fulfilled life. And so how did your clients react to you start incorporating these seven steps into how you work with them? See, my clients loved it. And I'm, I'm very grateful for that because our clients and our values were aligned. And they also see that uh, money is a, is a part of the life. Yeah. And unfortunately, again, in Australia, we see that, we understand that as well, that life is bigger than the money. Even before I fully implemented the seven steps, I approached even accounting with similar mindset. It's my just reason is now expanded to, you know, one step further. I'm deeply thankful to my clients, my team, my family who support me in learning, you know, from thought leaders around the globe and, and, and let me bring this learning back to, back to our work. So how we work with a client when we see that I now help them understand the concept and we help them with choosing their goals through using 30 sales framework. And then we guide them with accountability, scorecards, coaching to achieve the goals that create their financial freedom and fulfilled life. Similarly, for our accounting clients, we follow the similar mindset, similar system that we help them creating the business financial freedom fulfillment plan that goes deep into the viability statement and structure and what they need, all those things, right? And then we, we provide them a one-stop solution for their bookkeeping, counting, tax, all those requirements. And then we provide them a CFO guide to help them achieve your financial goals. So that's dedicated to financial goals there. Wow, amazing. It's a holistic program. And so, Mukesh, if people want to learn more about the book, learn more about the launch, learn more about you, how do they find you? My book is launching on 6th of November. So you'll be able to visit my website, uh, mikeshbajaj.com.au, where you can buy your signed copy and you can have an exclusive photograph if you join me in the launch. 
if you couldn't join there, then you can sign up for the newsletter for now, where I'm sharing uh, lots of stories and insights. And also, if you message me on Instagram, special to the audience today, perspective and fulfillment, those two words, and I'll send you a surprise. Hey, love it. Well done. So everybody, sign up to the newsletter, order your signed copy. If you're in the Sunshine Coast, you can have a photo with Mukesh and check out Instagram and put those terms, perspective and fulfillment, into the um, chat and you'll get a surprise from Mukesh. Fantastic. Love it. <laughs> well done. Well, Mukesh, it's been an absolute pleasure. I've really enjoyed this conversation. I've learned a lot. I think these seven steps are a beautifully designed and packaged system that balance, again, philosophy, spirituality, and tactics and strategy, real life. So it allows people to achieve any goal, whether it be financial or non-financial. So I wish you the best of luck with the book and best of luck with the system and uh, with the launch. I think it's going to be fantastic. So if you want to leave the audience with one last message, what would it be? I would like to say that you can start to the audience that you can start your journey by just practicing gratitude. It's that easy. You can send a thank you note to someone in your life. It could be your family, could be your friends, could be your spouse, your team, your teacher, anyone in your life. You can call them. You can WhatsApp or send them a text. Whichever is easier for you. Just take a first step. Beautiful. Yeah. So true. And that's step one of the framework. Love it. Well, Mukesh, thank you again for joining me. I really enjoyed that. I'm sure the listeners and the viewers will enjoy that as much as I did. So I really appreciate you coming on the show. Everyone out there, enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you very, very soon for our next episode of Playing With Perspective, the Suspended Animation Podcast. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Dan. Thanks again for joining me for another episode of Playing With Perspective, the Suspended Animation Podcast. If you would like to join me as a guest on the show, I would be delighted to collaborate. Feel free to buzz me on 0414 659 800 or email me on darren at suspendedanimation.com.au. I'm always on the lookout for great guests who can share their stories and expertise with my community. Also, if you have been thinking about putting your own podcast together and not sure where to begin, look no further. I run a really simple three-part podcasting course, one-on-one -on -one with me, where I walk you through the entire podcasting journey. You will end up with a fantastic new podcast to start sharing right away. Feel free to get in touch to discuss further. But for now, though, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time.